Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video I'm going to explain how the depth first search algorithm can be coded in Python. If you haven't watched my depth first search algorithm explanation yet, I strongly recommend you watch that first. This is going to be pretty hard to understand if you haven't watched the video first on the algorithm itself. This video is going to use exactly the same graph as you can see here, the same graph that I have in that my previous depth first search video. And I'm going to use the same color convention and the same variable conventions and everything. So this is the graph. It's an undirected graph. And we're going to apply depth first search to this graph, starting with vertex A. So we're going to have two classes in this program. Each of these classes is going to have a class name. And then it's going to have instance variables and functions. So in the vertex class, we need name, which for us will just be A, B, C, D, E, the letter name of the vertex. The neighbors, which is going to be a list, it's a list of the neighbors of that vertex. Discovery time, finish time, and color, which I explained in my previous video. And then for functions, we just have one function in the vertex class, which is add neighbor. And in the graph class, the graph, we have a collection of vertices, and we're going to store those vertices in a dictionary, a Python dictionary, which is basically a key value pair. And I'll show you how that's done in a minute. And then we're going to have two functions, add vertex and add edge. And then, of course, our depth first search function. Uh, one other convention, add vertex is actually going to take a vertex object. And add edge is going to take A, B, C, D, the character, from and to. So each vertex is going to have its own list of neighbors. So, for example, vertex A in our graph has neighbors B and E. Vertex B has neighbors A and F. So in our graph, you can see an edge between vertices A and B. And when we apply that edge in our program, we're basically adding B as a neighbor to A and A as a neighbor to B. This means that there's a direct edge between vertices A and B. And then in our graph class, the vertices dictionary is going to be a key value pair set. So we have the letter name, or which is basically a, a character, for the vertex. And then the value is going to be the vertex object itself. That way we can easily get the vertex object, and we can also get the letters as we need. So in our program, we have our class vertex. We have a constructor for the class vertex that takes a name in. And then we assign that name to the self.name variable. And the other variables we just initialize as basically default values. So the list is an empty list of neighbors. Discovery time and finish time are zero. And color starts out with black for all of the vertices. For our add neighbor function, we receive a vertex letter, A, B, C, so on. The first thing we need to do is check if this is already in our neighbors list. And if it's not, then we append it to the list and we resort the list because we always want to store these in sorted order. And the way we're doing this is basically converting our neighbors list to a set. And then we say if v is not in set, append it to our neighbors list and then sort. And for our graph class, we have this vertices dictionary, which is a collection of all the vertexes in the graph. Uh, time will explain in a minute. And then our add vertex function receives a vertex. And the first thing we check is if what we passed in is actually a vertex. Because if it's just a string or something, we're going to return false. Or an uh, integer or some other type of variable, we're going to return false. So we test if this vertex variable that's passed in is actually a vertex object. And the name is not already in our vertices list. Then we'll add it to the vertex list and return true. Our add edge function takes two character values, the vertex at either end of the edge. And the first thing we check is if both u and v are existing vertices in our graph. And if they're not, then we'll simply return false. If they are, then we're going to need to iterate through the vertices. We find u and add v as a neighbor to it. We find v and add u as a neighbor to it. So we're basically setting the neighbors in the vertex class for both u and v. And then we return true. We have a simple print graph function so that we can see what our graph looks like. And we're basically iterating through the vertices and printing out all the information from it. So there are two different ways to implement the depth first search function. You can do it recursively or iteratively. And I chose to do it recursively. 
So I have two separate DFS functions, and you can see this one has an underline, which means that it's really just used internally as my recursive function. So when you call the DFS function, you're calling this one. You're passing in the vertex that you're going to start at, because you can start at a different vertex in the graph every time you call this. This is where this time variable comes in. We're going to call this a global variable time. This is actually the easiest way for me to do it. I don't like using global variables, but uh, this works out pretty well. Time, uh, we set it to 1 every time we call depth first search function. And then we call the recursive depth first search function on that vertex. So really all this does is sets the, initializes the time to 1 and then passes the vertex into this recursive function. So the recursive function is going to take that vertex, it's going to change the color to red, which means that it's already discovered, and it's going to set the discovery time. Increments the time counter every time it sets a time. Then we're going to iterate through each of Vertex's neighbors. We're going to test if it is black. If it is color is black, that means it hasn't been visited yet. So we're going to do a recursive call on depth first search on the neighboring Vertex. And then in finishing, after we've done all that, we'll set the color to blue, which means it's finished. And we set the finish time. And we increment our time counter. And that does it for our recursive function. So my test code, I created a new graph called G. I created a vertex called lowercase a. That's my variable name for that vertex. And then I added this vertex to the graph. Here's another way to do it. You can do it in a single line. You can add vertex B to the graph. So this is two different ways to add a vertex to graph G. And actually, here's a much more efficient way. You can add a whole series of vertices if they're all in order. Here we did everything from range from A to K, which is actually going to go only through J. And we'll add every single one of those. Now we don't have to worry that A and B are already in there because we already have a check up there before we add the vertex if it already exists and we're not going to add it. And we're using a dictionary to store them, so it doesn't really matter, right? We're not going to have duplicates in our list. And then our edges. These are all the edges from our graph. Uh, you'll recall that the edges look like this. You can see we have edges from A to B, A to E. We list all those out, and here is a basically a list of strings that represent our edges. And then we iterate through the list using a for loop, and then we add each one. So this adds the first letter and sends the second letter to the add edge function. And that adds all these edges to the graph, which basically is really adding them to our neighbors list. Right? That's what the neighbors list does. When we add an edge, it basically is adding it to these neighbors lists. Now that we've created the graph, we added these vertices, we added our edges, and then we can call depth first search on vertex A. And then we'll print the graph. Now let's run the program and see how the output looks. So this is what the output looks like. So we're basically printing the graph. We, we print the vertex A, its neighbors list, and then I printed the discovery time and the finish time for each vertex. So A's discovery time is 1, and finish time is 20, and so on. So you can see the discovery and finish time for every vertex. And you'll see if you look in my other video, these match up with the discovery and finish times in that video. So that wraps it up for depth first search in Python. I hope this video is helpful for you. I welcome any feedback in the comments below. And you can get all of my code on my GitHub site here. And if you like this video, I hope you'll click subscribe. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.